Hi, this is Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. This is a three-part video on depth of field. For the second part, I want to show you how to use depth of field for a still image, but using ray trace rendering. Now that you know how to use depth of field per shot, we're going to turn on to ray tracing and you will notice that the coherence between hardware rendering and ray tracing differs slightly in terms of the depth of field settings. So right now I'm using the close up view and which I've already adjusted under hardware rendering. And the minute I turn into ray trace, well, the depth of field is not the same. It doesn't seem to be as blurry as the hardware rendering was giving me. So I'm going to basically have to readjust slightly my depth of field. So I'm going to make sure that I'm still focusing on the closer bench to me uh, by changing the center of interest. And I'm going to mainly adjust the f-stop value. This is the value that I'm going to play mostly uh, with. As I am playing with this value, the ray tracing gets refreshed and re-rendered to reflect this adjustment. You'll notice that as the depth of field increase, you'll notice the fuzziness in the background elements. So even though the ray trace is not as refined, you start noticing the fuzziness, the early stage of the blurriness of your uh, rendering. So you can readjust and you don't have to wait uh, all the way for the root for the refinement of the image as you start to get early representation of your depth of field within your ray trace image. What I'm going to suggest next is to save an image so you can compare it with the hardware renderer in the viewport. So I'm going to hit the save button within the ray tracing status menu and save a test rendering result to be able to compare it. Before I go any further, I'm going to save this adapter field for now as a still image. And I'm going to call this one the close up shot, the same way that my hardware rendering shot that I'm trying to reproduce. Uh, but instead, this one, I'm going to call it close up dash ray trace to identify that it's exactly the same shot, but this one is the ray traced version. So I'm going to make sure that I save the depth of field, reset the position and close. Then I'll be able to go back to our hardware rendering version and compare my first test render to the hardware rendering version that I'm trying to reproduce under ray trace. So what I noticed so far is that the ray trace version does not mimic the hardware version that I have as the depth of field is not as blurry in the ray trace version than the hardware version. So that means that I need to go back to my close up ray trace back to enabling ray tracing in the viewport and fine tuning the camera properties depth of field by reducing even further the f-stop. Now you might have to test for a little, a little while and readjust the f-stop until you reach satisfaction. Once you do so, make sure that you reset the position of your shot to save these uh, properties, depth of field properties into your shot. Finally, save your image, go back to hardware rendering where you have the original close-up shot and look at your final image as a comparison. And once you have find something that is comparable, then you know that you have reached the proper setting for ray tracing. So unfortunately, the, pro the ray tracing property might slightly varied from the hardware rendering. So you'll have to test it until you get used to it. And once you're used to it, you know exactly how to adjust your setting plus or minus and it'll go faster from there.